Our next question, we'll start with Fitz. The next question is, what do you see as Georgia's number one educational challenge? Thank you, and I'll concur that the grad rate is problematic for us. <coughs> Young people that do not graduate high school just have far worse outcomes overall. We have got to put things in place to assist these young people. I'll tell you there are two issues that contribute to the issue of lack of graduation, and we've got to be cognizant of it, and we've got to do something about it. I've always said that I create or eliminate 90% of my headaches with who I hire. We have got to work on setting up a system where we continue to attract the best and brightest to our field, that we don't treat our educators as second-class citizens, that we give them the support that they need. Because the single most important variable, once that child hits the classroom door, on how successful they're going to be, how far they're going to move, is the skill set of that classroom teacher. We want the best and brightest to come into the field. And quite frankly, with what's happened to our educators, it's not as appealing as it once was, even though the educators I know are absolutely passionate about their young people. The second part that we're talking about with a poor graduation rate is apathy or students who do not see the relevance of what they are doing. We have got to help them find their passion. Our Pathways Initiative that allows young people to have real world experiences where they mentor with people in the world of work. These are the things that will help us help the young people find their passion. We don't lose young people because of a lack of aptitude. We lose the young people because they don't see the relevance of what they are doing. We have got to help them find that relevance so they'll stick with us and continue throughout the educational system. That will help us, and we've got to treat our teachers with more respect. Again, this is a, a very easy question for you know an educator and somebody that has seen you know, our kids you know, at the high school level as a social studies teacher, but also work with them at the elementary and pre pre K level. You know, it, it's literacy. You know, if we can teach our kids to read, we will open up the doors of opportunity. You know, and that's what we need to really focus on. You know, for myself as a high school teacher, when it came time to test. You know, my kids knew facts. They knew figures. That was never the issue. It was their ability to read and comprehend. And lo and behold, you think about all the tests we give in education, whether it's math, science, social studies, whatever. Guess what you have to do? You have to be able to read. And so that's where we have to address the problem. If we are going to improve education, we have to make sure that our kids are literate. You know, one of the things I've looked at that with, with, within some law enforcement agencies they look at the literacy level or the literate level, level at third grade. At that point, they begin to determine how many beds they're going to need in their correction facilities. You know, Georgia right now, I think, according to the first you know, foundations, FVRST, you know, we graduate and have an average literacy level at about eight, eight or grade eight and a half. So we need to improve it there. That's something we have. My wife, who is a reading recovery teacher, says, Richard, the best thing that parents can do is again take a book and read five minutes a night. And so that's why I've committed that even before we get into pre-K, that we reach out to nonprofit groups such as the First Foundation, such as Dr. Ben Carson's you know, uh, fund, you know, fund as well, our Lions Club, our Rotary Club. Let's put books in the hands of our kids you know, prior to getting into education. If our parents will sit down and read, we will increase their vocabulary, we will increase their sentence structure, we will make a difference. That is where we attack it. We address it at, at the root, and again, we do it by addressing the needs of the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.